All right, so uh, focus camera, focus camera, focus. You can do it. All right. Anyway, so I picked up a Retro Duo portable. Uh, it's a little bit different than what I normally use. I wanted something to play the cartridges instead of just ROMs through emulators with an Android device. So I figured I'd go with this because it plays multiple systems for the games that I have. And from what I saw through videos, it seemed fairly accurate. Um, it's not perfect from what I've used, but it is fairly good compared to other clones that I've used that use system on a chip technology. Uh, I had, well I have to say it, it, it's more accurate than the FC Twin that I had when it comes to the Nintendo and Super Nintendo. Um, but it plays more systems, and it's accurate enough for me. Um, Super Nintendo seems to work fine. The speakers, a lot of people mention, which are which is true, the speakers aren't the best. It has this weird, it's almost like the speakers get overdriven. How, it, you know, the input volume kind of is overdriven, but the output volume doesn't give you anything. Um... So, but if you put headphones on, it normally sounds fine, unless the uh, there are actual sound issues with the uh, hardware in the game. So, this is uh, Donkey Kong Country I have on here. The screen looks fine. It's not going to look like some kind of Android device with like a 1080p screen or something like that. It, it does actually seem to give an analog, kind of uh, like an AV signal you would get on your uh, CRT television through uh, AV cables. So it seems to give you that kind of signal. But it's very clear, nice backlit screen. Uh, it gives you more of a retro look, uh, which it looks fairly good. So, and it's trying to mimic the original hardware. It's not 100%, but it does do that. And uh, it's in a to-go package, and you can use your cartridges with it. And it doesn't just like dump the ROM or anything like that. It reads it like the original hardware would. And, you know, you flick the switch, it turns on, it plays. So I'm going to turn that on. And while I'm turning that on, while I have that going, it comes with this. Uh, somebody said that this was a micro USB. This is not. This is either some proprietary connector or something that's not so common, but it is definitely not a micro USB. That would have been cool if I could actually plug this into the, you know, into my Android device and plug a Super Nintendo controller in, but that doesn't, that's not going to work because that does not fit into a micro USB. Um, wow. Yeah, the, the sound is not very loud. <laughs> Let me make sure that the video is not too bright. There's a brightness thing on here. For some reason is referred to as contrast. But whatever. So there we go. Uh, that also, if you hold it down, it's a reset button. Uh, so the systems that this plays, it's like, let's see. Because I got adapters, uh, there's I have the retro gen, which I got the same day. I was supposed to get that on Friday. It ended up showing up before the the uh, the uh, retro duo portable, same day, but you know before. So retro gen, you can pop adapters on top of that. <laughs> so that plays Sega Genesis games, but you can also this is kind of silly because I the adapter I have it's very over the top for this, but. You could do this. <laughs> this is a crazy adapter I have. I need to get a more low profile one because that's insane. Um, it's still insane even without that, but you know. And you could use a master uh, of, of what's the word? Uh, power base converter if you want to, but that I saw that. That isn't that's even more insane. So some <laughs> there's a video somebody is doing with it. They had the the power base converter with the 32x adapter and like a fucking uh, I forget it's one of those cheat uh, game genie things or whatever and all these million adapters it was like a tower and it looked like it was going to fall on his head <laughs> um, 
Let's see here. So there's also the retro port, so that allows you to play NES games. Um, so that's humongous too, and it looks silly. And I actually, uh, as the advice of Barnacles, I watched his review. I took this and used it normally as a shim to keep it from swaying back and forth. Because I find that the weight distribu <laughs> distributing back and forth like that causes fatigue. So when you kind of use this, it's a little, it's kind of annoying. You pop this in the front or the back and it keeps the cartridge still and actually reduces fatigue. All right, sorry, I uh, got um, focus. I got uh, cut off because I ran out of space. I'm using my phone. Anyways, what was I talking about? The, the NES. This thing is gigantic and it's silly. And uh, yeah, I popped the thing in there, the shim that worked. I don't even remember what I was originally talking about. But on top of you being able to use Genesis, Master System, NES, Super Nintendo, which is already four systems, you can also take the uh, the uh, Super Super Game Boy and make it Game Boy. Then there's a, a, a Game Boy Advance uh, adapter, which you can take that makes six systems. Um, Advance. What else? I think. Um, as you see, as you hear, there's not much in the way of audio coming out. Um, let me show something that I don't see people showing. That's, uh, the viewing angles, which work fine when you play, but, you know, you, you move it a little, it does, I think it's more up and down that, that it disappears, but you really don't notice. Well, when I'm playing, I never had this, any issues about that. Um, so, I found that the NES was the biggest culprit for, uh, incorrect audio. Um, it wasn't horrible, it was weird, because some games were partially accurate, and in some places just were kind of, some of the audio was accurate, but there were certain little sound effects that were completely off and made you cringe a bit. Uh, this, this one did do that. Um... I forget what, what sound effect... Oh, yeah, when, you know, when you're walking around and and those damn little blob things come at you and then you have to go to some world where it goes... But it made this... kind of noise. So, yeah, that was it. That was kind of thing. And then Super Mario had certain levels, had some uh, volume accuracy issues, some kind of distortion, and I thought it was just the speakers causing the problem, but I put headphones on and it was the same. But once you go in these little dungeons, everything is perfectly accurate, and then you get outside and there's certain sound effects and, and music that's a little off. So, and then there's some games that are perfectly accurate, but um, that's that. Uh, I also found that virtual racing doesn't work. Surprise! It normally doesn't, um, but yeah, again, it doesn't work uh, through the RetroGen adapter. Um, I also attempted using Shinobi, the Master System version of Shinobi, this, um, and I think it's an issue with the, uh, FM sound, but when I tried it, when I tried to play the game, it was muted, so it's the only game I have that has FM sound, it's the only game that doesn't work, so, yeah, so, that's that. But everything else I play, like, I play Genesis games. It's weird, because it looks, I feel like Genesis is one of the probably ugliest. It's not terrible, but it gives you the ugliest display out of all of them. It gives you the original, it just gives you the original kind of CRT, um, AV kind of noise and stuff. But on the screen, it's not unplayable, and the, the accuracy is perfectly fine. But, um... That is that. Um, so I'm going to play, I'm going to attempt to play, uh, 
uh, some some of this. Oh, and I because I have a uh, retroed, I can actually download save files from the internet and drop them onto the cartridge. So that's kind of cool. I have somebody else's save file from the internet on, and I copied it onto the cartridge. So <laughs> I just wanted to try that out, and I did it with this one. But the sound is really low, so I'm gonna come in here. I don't wanna. Let me just zoom out of here. Go in here, and it's probably good. Oh! Nice. I got the banana hoard. This game plays fine. I will be recording some footage of the games directly so you can hear the sound better. Me. Hmm. Focus. You will focus. Or you will pay the consequences. There we go. But, uh, yeah, the sound is fine on the Super Nintendo side of things. I should probably have got a speaker or something and plugged it in. But, it's very low. But yeah, that's that, and you can just shut it off like that, like, um, <laughs> if you wanted to, um, so, well, the, you know, now there is a crunchy kind of noise, like you did got with the Retron 5, this is that kind of crunchy noise when you put it in, the original Retron 5 had that really bad, um, I don't think it's as bad, but when you pop a cartridge in, pull it out, you get that kind of uh, frosted flakes, uh, the crunchy noise there. Um, let me go with Streets of Rage 2. And pop it on to the RetroGen adapter. Uh, this RetroGen adapter also works on a Super Nintendo, but you need AV out, which it comes with that. But you need to actually use the video from the actual adapter. Um, basically, the RetroGen is a system on a chip on its own, but it works in other hardware. But for the Super Nintendo, it needs you to, um, it does need you to, uh, it was a little tall. <laughs> it needs you to, what am I saying? It needs you to, uh, plug in a, an AV out into the cartridge and send it to the TV. I found that the audio from this is bad. Uh, it's not very good. I don't know. I don't know if it's the same on other things, but it is... I would assume it would be, but the audio out of here is a lot better than the audio out of here. This is really, in here, it's really, like, distorted and crappy. So, but when playing on here, it's fine. Also, the uh, Retro Duo, the actual console, uh, it does not require the uh, AV out, so. Did I? No, I didn't start. It's just that, yeah. Just hit one player. Oh, actually. Okay, I think I just... I think the uh, sound was actually... Either the sound was low or the, the game got louder. I don't know. I think the sound was low, and I didn't know it. So well, now you can hear the sound. Now I feel stupid because I could have fucking raised the sound for the last game. But I will record it, so... So you can hear what it sounds like. I, mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned I played this on the TV. It, it worked just fine. It looked, you know, like kind of like what the original hardware would give you. But on an HD TV, which is normally like shit. <laughs> which is why I have the Retron 5. Okay, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't want to sit here for eternity. I, I am using the phone, my phone, to uh, capture this. Um, let me use the. 
virtual port. Um, let's see about getting this in here. There we go. Make sure it's in the shot. I can't get everything in the shot, but there. Actually, <laughs> just, just do that. That is totally ridiculous, but, you know, if you're by yourself, it's kind of like masturbation. If you're by yourself and nobody sees you, everything's good. Uh, so, yeah. That stand doesn't really snap in place, the stand here that I'm holding it up on. This comes with it. It just kind of sits in there, and if you pick it up, it'll fall out. <laughs> um... All right, so flip this on and play uh, uh, Ventures of Link. And uh, is this? I don't know if this is Jesus Christ. That fucking stand is fucking shit. All right, so and to lower the brightness, I guess it does. It it defaults when I turn it off. So, I have my game here. Hmm. So, is that how it sounds? I know the last time when I was listening to it before, it was really bad, but... I say it's like, what? It sounds a little off. <laughs> it's not so off that I wouldn't play it, it's just... It seems a little too high-pitched. I don't really need her, but whatever. Wait a second, who doesn't need her? Okay. And the, the controls are fine with me, I don't... The, like, the L and R, the only thing, that's the one thing. The L and R, the placement, makes you kind of make your hands a little un uncomfortable. But I mostly have a problem with the L um, bumper button. Because, I'm guessing it's because I'm a righty. But because this I have no problem with, but it's the L button that I have trouble pressing, especially in fighting games. Um, but I don't know. Uh, it takes some adjusting to get to used to. But, um, yeah. This isn't as bad as I remember it. <laughs> Maybe it was just acting up a little. Hmm. So, yeah, I remember it being worse than that, but, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it was acting up, I have no clue. But, um, another game, Mario Brothers. Mario Brothers. Oh, here we go. We got it right here. I'm gonna switch, no, I don't have it. Yes, I do. I just have a box. I brought the box in. It was empty. But I have the cartridge. Uh, so let's turn this off. Okay. The, uh, screen is, uh, it likes fingerprints. So, you have to wipe it off a bit. Even if you don't try to touch it, you'll end up doing it. <laughs> Although, there was a couple times where I tried to touch it because I'm used to touch screens. I was trying to do something. I don't know why I had to touch the screen. And, of course, the, the stand fell out again, because it doesn't really snap in place, it just sits there. But, yeah. Okay, so let's turn on Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, which, of course, Duck Hunt's not gonna work. I don't know that it doesn't work on it. I know they make uh, light zappers for any uh, SNES, with SNES plugs. I don't know if that works. Oh yeah, see so you hear that kind of 
Yeah, let me. And it sounds like that through headphones too. And it's got that kind of distorted sound. Colors look fine. It's almost as if it sounds like the, the audio in some places is doubled. And a lot of times I find that the NES side, uh, the audio seems to cancel itself out. So certain tracks, certain audio tracks will cancel other audio tracks out. It'll start phasing, kind of. But at least the sky isn't purple and uh, stuff like that. You can hear that. I don't know if you can hear. Let me just pull it up. Where's the speaker? It's on covering part. But, uh, yeah, and the speakers can be distorted a lot of times. It started to sound worse when I fucking pulled it away. <laughs> I was like, oh, that sounds more like the, uh, you know, like the original hardware that I pull away. It's like, rrr, rrr. It almost sounds like, uh, you know, it's possessed or something. Uh-oh. I'm gonna lose. But it's not, you know, I mean, I can play it. I can play it. Um, let me just shut that off. All right, um, let me do some master system. Masturbation. Okay, this is gonna, this is like a Lego set here. Um, what do we do here? We got this, we got Rambo, First Blood Part Two. Um, this is a game that works. Then we have our other piece of the puzzle here. Where the hell is it? Probably right in front of my face somewhere. Oh, on top of uh, under a Sega Genesis card. So then we have all this, and there we go. This gigantic tower of cartridges. I need to put that in, and then of course I have to put the stand back so that I can show it on the camera easier. Um. Oh, I think there's a screw that has to go in there. I, they gave me a screw. Actually, the screws on there, they give you, uh, they go into the retro port, and that doesn't work. It, uh, it the, the screw doesn't line up, and it's not long enough to actually go in, so it's kind of stupid, but whatever. Uh, also, apparently, the screw is supposed to, oh, I guess it's just a notch so that you can put the thing in, whatever. But whatever, who cares? Um, so... We have this tower of video games here, or a tower of cartridges. Let's switch that on. And we have a Master System game running. Now, I dare you to go on a bus with this. Um, change that again. Um, and sit there with a bus with a tower of uh, cartridges, or a train, or something, or sit in the park. In a public park, not one that nobody goes to, damn it. Uh, so here we are. We have Rambo, First Blood Part 2. And it is... Oh, there you go. That worked out well. This thing is great. Love this stand. Excellent. <laughs> this stand is a piece of shit. Okay, add that to my review. The stand sucks. Although, I guess with the tower of video games, on, or cartridges on top doesn't help, but... There it is, Master System Games. Uh, I don't think of, uh, other than that, Shinobi. Oh, let me test Shinobi. I always see it's working. <sighs> um, let me try to 
Okay, I'm trying to take off. I'm trying to figure out what I take off first here. Ugh. Uh, I'll hold on to the, uh, the, the thing, the stand, so that it doesn't fall on the floor. It would be nice if they let it snap in, but they didn't. Okay. Uh, Shinobi. So this, this, if this gives me sound, I'm going to be happy, because it didn't before. I only tried it once, but I don't think this is going to give me sound, so... Yay! I could beat someone to death with this shit. Okay. This is this stand works excellent. Great idea. Don't fall. Please. It's a little top-heavy. Then you see... It says Shinobi. And... Start... Try to get it to play. And as you see, there's no sound. So, you can play the game just with no sound. So, I'm just, uh, I'm going to test something. <laughs> um, if it's at all possible, if I have my headphones. Hold on one second. I am going to get my headphones. So, I'll pause this. Uh, by the way, I highly recommend that you get these. These are Osdom MO8s, and they're like you can get them for forty bucks. They're, they freaking sound amazing. They're Bluetooth and wired. They sound fucking amazing for forty bucks, especially. Uh, let me see if I can actually hear anything through that port, and then I'm going to check the Retro Gen port to see if there's anything coming out of that. Uh, make sure I okay left right. Okay. And there is absolutely no sound coming out of the Retro Gen's audio port. Let's check the... All right. Oh, you know what? Okay, I forgot that it kills the uh, video feed if you do that. But uh, there is absolutely no sound. <laughs> just making sure. I'm not crazy. Well, I am crazy, but uh, that's just something. Not because of that. All right, so there it is. That game just just do this. Uh, the stand from hell. Okay. No, not okay. This stand is a piece of worthless shit. Um. Stay. No. Uh. Stay. Good stand. Okay, so my phone is telling me that I have a little battery. But, as a whole, I do enjoy the the retro uh, uh, retro portable uh, duo. Retro duo portable V2.0 so far. Um, just there's, of course, the audio could be better. Like a lot of people have said, um, the towers of adapters that you tend to have to use are silly and ridiculous, uh, but if you're by yourself somewhere, you know, whatever. And then, of course, you can use your original controllers, your SNES, or you could buy their controllers, which are cheaper, but, uh, you know, I would just rather just use the original controllers. Um, and you could use it as a home console, like a regular, uh, you know, a regular, blah, 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 a regular home console to play these games. Um, this is the part where the tower of games isn't so bad. Um, and you can play, oh, you, I forgot, you can play, um, that's where I got the consoles I was talking about. Um, you could play... Oh, and I brought one in here. Actually, to test to show. I have a Super Famicom game. One Super Famicom game. This is the um, the uh, censored version of Mortal Kombat 2. The Japanese Famicom thingy. And it does work. 
You get that tower of games over there, pop the, the Super Famicom thing in, and drop that thing again. <clears throat> this back on. And here we go. Let's switch that on. Just one last gameplay. And uh, you'll see the censored version of Mortal Kombat 2 for Super Famicom. Okay, options. Put on very easy. Puss mode. Select. Let's go with Baraka. So this game uses the L and R. Um, it's block. Just it's only block. I think. For LNR, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 uses it for running. You see there's green blood. Uh, also the fatalities. When you do a fatality, it's in black and white. See? Black and white. And if it doesn't show black and white, the fatality thing is green. <laughs> so when you do like a pit fatality that doesn't turn black and white, and then it's basically just, there's a thing that says fatality and it's green. So that's that. So, and it plays, you know, it's PAL, NTSC, whatever. Uh, I believe it also does Mega Drive. Is it do Mega Drive? I think so. I'm sure if the retro gen adapter will do Mega Drive. It says Genesis. I gotta check up on that, because uh, you know, if it does that, it does a lot. So just you know, expect a tower of games. But yeah, so I will be doing gameplay of this. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.